It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with The Mixed Martial Arts Hour back in your life. Oh, my chair just fell down. There we go. On this Monday, January 4th, 2016. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ariel Halwani. Welcome back. We missed you. I missed you. We haven't done one of these in three weeks, and what a stretch it has been. The world of mixed martial arts, another crazy, wild, exciting, exhilarating stretch. When we last said goodbye, we were on the heels of UFC 194 and that epic weekend in Las Vegas. We were getting ready for UFC on Fox in Orlando, and what a show that was. Wow. Rafael Dos Anjos defeating Donald Cerrone in a, in a matter of seconds, I think 66 seconds. Of course, since then, we've come to find out that Cerrone's returning next month as a welterweight to fight Tim Means. So much happens when you take time off in this sport. Nate Diaz putting on a show during his fight, after his fight, calling out Conor McGregor, getting censored all over the place on Fox. Alistair Overeem coming into that fight as we as we found out a few days before it against JDS as a free agent, winning via knockout. Ending that rivalry, at least for now. So that was a lot of fun. Then we had Ryzen with their debut show in Japan. Some good, some bad. The good, I thought, King Mo's tournament victory. Um, Crone Gracie. Those, those were some fun things. Even the Gabby Garcia fight was kind of good in a weird way. And the bad, obviously, was Sakuraba getting mauled. Uh, the Fedor fight, to me, was like, I, I, I get why people wanted to see it, but it was uninteresting, to say the least. And by the way, who's the one that reported Jaideep Singh back in October? And no one believed. Oh yeah, uh, I had no interest in that whatsoever. Hopefully they get him a, a, a more. Hey, like I'm not going to hate Fedor for it. Uh, take the money if you're going to fight. You know, uh, uh, essentially a one and zero because he was really one and zero in my opinion. They gave him that fight on three days' notice to become two and zero and become the 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 deep champion. If you're going to fight a, a one and zero guy uh, for the same amount of money as as an accomplished guy, do it. But you know, Ryzen should. If they're going to be a credible promotion, put put together a, a better a better opponent for for Fedor in his next fight. We'll see what happens there. And then, of course, UFC 195. Um, I I don't know if I could say it's the greatest title fight I've ever seen. I don't know if I could say it's the greatest welterweight title fight I've ever seen. But I think I am confident in saying it was the greatest fifth round of a title fight that I have ever seen. That fifth round between Robbie Lawler and Carlos Condit. If you haven't seen it. Do yourself a favor and watch it. It's a super close fight. It's not a robbery. It comes down essentially to one round, that third round, and people are are split, maybe a little more in favor of Carlos. It's somewhat heartbreaking when you hear him afterwards talk about potentially retiring after this fight. So close to becoming champion, but what can you say about Robbie Lawler at this point? It seems like he gets better as the fight goes on each and every time, and it's just impossible to break this guy. It's impossible to break the new Robbie Lawler, the welterweight Robbie Lawler is virtually unbreakable at this point. And what's next for him? Of course, there's a lot to talk about there. So much to get to on this show. UFC 195, in a nutshell, reminded me why this is such a special sport to be a fan of and, and, and to cover because it didn't have the pomp and circumstance of 194. It didn't have the buzz of a 194. But if you look at the emotion, the victories, the performances, the losses, I mean... It just had it all, and it reminds you that you know here we are in the dead of winter. You know, NBA season it kind of goes you know goes through the motions. Even the NFL season to a degree as well. NHL same deal. You see it in baseball, soccer, and all the sports. There's a there's a there's a lull in the schedule, and while MMA and in the UFC in particular they don't have they don't have an off season. Every single fight means the world to these guys. Look at that emotion that came out of Stipe Miocic. After that victory, look at the emotion following the Condit Lawler fight. You'll never see the 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 emotion that you see in Game 65 of the regular season between the Bucks and Sixers. That's just that's emotionless. You'll never see that in MMA. It's never mundane. This event had nothing to do with Boston, has nothing to do with Newark, has nothing to do with London coming up, and that's what makes it so special. So we can complain about so many events being back to back, and I feel like I've kind of gone on this rant before, but it just reminds you, man, it's just such a beautiful sport when when it all comes together and, and men and women rise to the occasion. And that's what we saw Saturday night in Las Vegas. All right, what are we getting to today on the show? This is one of my favorite shows of the year, by the way. This is our award show. 
We're recapping the entire year. We have 22 awards to give out. It's going to be New York Rick and I. We're going to be do the, doing that in the back end of the show, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Maybe our best award show yet. I think we've been doing this for three, four years now, so I can't wait to get to that. Uh, in addition to our award show, we're going to be talking to Mark Ramundi of MMAfighting.com. We'll recap UFC 195 at around 2.15. We're going to talk to Holly Holm, the UFC bantamweight champion for the women's division. She may have won a couple awards. It's kind of funny. Last year, we had the male fighter of the year, Robbie Lawler, on. Is she our female fighter of the year? We'll find out. Uh, around 125, we'll talk to Tyron Woodley. He was a very interesting... Uh, observer, I should say interested observer on Saturday at the Fox Studios because he wants to fight the winner of Lawler Condon, and that's Robbie Lawler. Does he get that opportunity? We'll find out. But first, let us go to the phone lines and welcome in a man who had a very big 2015. Just a few weeks ago, we were in Las Vegas and saw him rise to the occasion with perhaps his best performance yet, his best victory yet, a knockout win over Chad Mendez. They all said it couldn't be done. He did it. He's Frankie Edgar. He's the number one contender in the UFC's featherweight division. He joins us on the phone right now. Frankie, how are you? I'm good, man. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Would you say 2015 was your best year yet? Is that, is that, is that a little too crazy because you've been a champion in other years? What do, you, what do you think? I don't know. I feel like uh, the cream is rising to the top, you know, that's for sure. So, uh, you know, things are going upwards. That, that, that's all I know, and I'm I, I'm happy with my, my past year for sure. So there's a lot to get to uh, to talk to you about here, and, but actually I, w- I want to start um, a little bit out of left field because your fight, your second fight against Gray Maynard at UFC 125, was five years and one day. Uh, I'm gonna botch this. Prior to UFC 195, does that make sense? It was January 1st yeah, yeah. of uh, 2000 and what was it? Uh, 2011. 11, right? There 11, you go. 10? Yeah, 11. 11. 11, 11, 11 yeah. Uh, and and, and yeah. that fight. Did you watch the Condit Lawler fight? I did. Who'd I did. you scored for? You know, I saw it at a bar, and people were bothering me. Okay. <laughs> but um, you know, <laughs> the rounds. I, I thought it was close. I really did. I, you know, I, I would, I would, I would have been surprised either way. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I thought Robbie definitely, uh, overall, the momentum was with him, I-, I think, just based on how he closes out fights. But, man, it was it was a great fight. It's funny that you say that you were at a bar and people are bothering you. I hate watching sporting events, and in particular MMA events, at a bar. And I'm not Frankie Edgar. I'm not this worldwide celebrity. Why in the world <laughs> would you go to a bar to watch a fight? I feel like you couldn't watch uh, a second I, of it. I know. It was at my buddy's place, and I was being cheap. I didn't feel like buying it. but uh, What? <laughs> Uh, Are they not paying yeah, you no, enough? I, I just wanted to get out of the house. I wanted to get out of the house. I went to my, it's my buddy's bar. I thought, uh, you know, we usually go upstairs, but we ended up watching with the with the masses and uh, the common folk. Yeah, it was a good fight, so yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so why it somewhat reminded me of your fight? It's because you know afterwards, there's a lot of controversy about judging and scoring and what's a ten eight round and who won this and that. What's your take? Because you you know about this better than most. I mean, your fight against BJ, the first one, one twelve. There was some controversy there. What's your take on the state of MMA judging, the 10-9 system, all that? Is it time that we really rectify this issue here, or are you okay with it? It is. I think it is. You know, obviously, look, just this issue keeps coming up, and it's because the system's flawed. You know, um, I, I don't know if I have the answer. Um, I think uh, you know, I've seen someone say something about maybe more judges, more eyes looking at it. Yeah. You know, uh, I think even though, you know, I think they should do it overall, like, all right, who overall score of the fight, you know, like the momentum, like Pride kind of did a little yes. bit. You know, like I said, Condit may have won one round the round, but I felt like the momentum was with Robbie that fight, you know? That, that's a great point. I actually asked someone that afterwards. Uh, if this was Pride, who would win? And I think it would be Robbie Lawler. It makes a lot of sense, although that's subjective as well. I just think my main problem is 10-9. We don't know. It's, it's so hard to decide what's a 10-8, and you know that better than every, anyone. But then a 10-9, like the fifth round couldn't be the same score as the third round or the second round. It's, it, it just That's a boxing model. It doesn't work for MMA. And I don't understand right. why there's more of a, there's not more of a push to fix this because I feel like guys are getting robbed and you know this victories mean a lot you need a victory if you're trying to get a new contract or advance your career get a title shot I think it's high time that we fix this I agree man it's people's lives on the line you know literally I mean it's how we make our living and you know, for someone to take a win from you that you know maybe you uh, you should have won is definitely a heartbreaking. And you know what's also weird? These judges are making peanuts. They're, they're making nothing, but yet they're deciding fights that, you know, seven figures on the line, if not more. Right. 
that seems right. a little skewed as well. Your buddy Ricardo Alameda is, is a judge in the state of New Jersey. Does he ever talk to you about you know what he thinks? You know what the issues are because I know he did a, a show recently where he was in a room all by himself. I think it was CFFC, and that seems like an yeah. interesting concept as well. Yeah, no, Jersey's definitely a pretty progressive. I think with some of the things they're trying to you know to see what works and see what. Ricardo even said it was just a little weird, just not watching <laughs> it out there and being okay. on the on, on headphones and whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean you got to try something. You're good. It, it is flawed, and you know I'm not saying that. I mean I think Condit. I wouldn't have been upset if either one of them. I mean we all want an athlete. When you watch a fight like that, do you enjoy it? Like, do you say, because like, as a fan, I think we enjoy it. But as a fighter, are you like, man, that's a lot of punishment? Like, because you're looking at it through different goggles. How do you how do you digest a fight like that? Yeah, it, it's tough. Sometimes you look at it as a, as a fighter, or sometimes you want to look at it as a fan. But I think it's when it's when it's not my weight class, it's definitely easier to look at it as a fan. You know, and especially those two. I mean, they're both really classy guys. They're they're easy to get behind them. Um, I was trying to watch it through a fan's eyes, uh, that's for sure. Do you cringe at all, or do you enjoy the, the brutality? I mean, you, you cringe a little bit, I'll be real. You yeah. know, um, I mean, you enjoy it too, though. It's just like, you know, it's just like anything, man. Like in the, in the Roman days, people, I'm sure, cringe, but they cheer for it too at the same time. Right, and I'm sure, and, uh, I'm sure you, you, you feel for Carlos, right? I mean, getting so close yeah, and, ugh. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a couple times too now, you know? Um, right. You know, uh, against George. I mean, it was when he wasn't his close fight, but he's been at, been knocking on that door and hasn't been able to get it done. It's definitely tough. Now you got to think how, how many how many opportunities are you ever going to get again? Right. I don't think we understand that these guys. You, you, you put everything into a fight. You climb that ladder. You climb that mountain, and then when you lose, sometimes you have to go to the the bottom of it again. And well, that that in its own right is is a daunting thought. Okay, so let's transition to you here because you were a big story in December. You're still very much a big story. Where are we at with you? Do you know what's next? Do you know if you're getting that title shot? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm like in limbo here. You know, I was I was promised that I get whatever I want <laughs> one night. <laughs> the next night saying, oh, I guess Connor gets whatever he wants. Right. You know. Are you pissed off? For sure I'm pissed. You know, um, I've been at this for a while now. I've been uh, knocking on the door for this title shot for a while. and You know, I mean, I, it started with Cub. It's, it's Cub was promised a title shot. If he beat me, he was promised a title shot. I beat him. I finished him in pretty, you know, pretty dominating fashion. And, no, I, I'm not even considered for that title shot. I mean, it's, it's just... Uh, and I, you know, I take it in stride. I do everything in stride, man. I do think I'm a company man, but uh, it's not really, uh, it's not really panning out for me being that way. But at, at some point, you can't keep taking it in stride, right? And at some point, you're gonna break. You're gonna, you're gonna lose patience. I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I'm, I'm there. I'm there already. <laughs> but you know, I'm not one to sit there and, and cry about. It. I mean, it's funny, you know, people, my whole careers, you know, are, as a recent, you're too quiet. You need to say stuff. Da da da, da and then. Then you say stuff, they're like, oh, you're fucking crying, blah, blah, blah. You know, come on. You just can't win with these people. That's true. You know, and, uh, and that's why you really can't pay attention to them. I, and the people I need to be talking to is Daniel Lorenzo, and they, they seem like they're not listening either. So when's the last time you talked to them about this? This is the night, the night, the night of, uh, of Connor's fight. Uh, I talked to, uh, to Dana a little bit, and um, you know, I walked up to go into the cage. Um, someone grabbed me to go into the cage. I mean, one of them was Ali, and the other one was one, one of Lorenzo's assistants. So I thought... They wanted me to go in the cage. And then as I'm walk, about to walk in, Dana's walking out. He's like, you're not going in there. He's like, oh, Connor's going up, blah, blah, blah. We don't know what he's doing. He might get out of a rematch. We don't know. Huh. You know, I just kind of, I've never been, I mean, I granted, I guess Connor put himself in that position where he's in charge, but I, I've never been there. So, uh, you know, usually I'm doing what, I, what they ask of me. So you're actually walking into the cage and you get stonewalled. Yeah, yeah. Dana gives me the, uh, you ain't going in there. Is that embarrassing? Uh, you know, I don't know, man. I, I don't know who planned, who put, brought me up there anyway. So, okay. uh, you know, I don't know if anybody's seen me embarrassing. I mean, it's embarrassing that I don't get to the damn title shot. <laughs> right, right. It, what, what an amazing 24 hours for you. And, and I couldn't help, I think I even asked you this question in our post-fight interview. You win in emphatic fashion. No one does that to Chad Mendez. And then they say, you're getting the title shot. And then in the back of my mind, I'm like, in 24 hours, Connor's fighting Aldo. A whole host of things can happen. They could take this away from you in 24 hours. Like I can see this happening. And so, what's what's the range of emotions that you're dealing with? You're you're so excited, yet are you a little bit like hesitant to really embrace this moment? And then you see what happens to Aldo, and then it, it's complete. Like I felt like you went home to New Jersey a couple days later, like with, with more questions and answers when you should have had the answer that you were looking for. 
No, I agree. You know, I was I was deflated, man. I mean, deflated. I, was on, I was on sky high one one day, and the next day, literally, like someone rained on my parade. Um, and it was just bot- it was eating at me. It's like, fuck, man. I just fought, I fought one of the best fights of my life. I shouldn't be feeling like I should be going home, right? You know, riding high right now, and uh, and I just wasn't. So that uh, that that's unfortunate. You know, I mean, you don't you don't only have so many of those moments in this career, and for it to kind of get taken away from me just by uh, the next day is tough. So if he does go up to 155, what are you going to do? I don't know. I mean, I I, I don't know what they're like. Like again, I I know nothing. <laughs> I'll be honest. I know nothing. And uh, are they going to let him keep the belt? What? I, I I don't know. You know, I remember when they were trying to get me go down to 45 when I was a 55 pound champion. I said, they said I have to let go of the belt to do that. Hmm. You know, but well, I don't know if it's going up. I don't know what it is. But here we are. So and I'm not fighting for the title. <laughs> Are you sure about that, though? Are you 100% sure of that? Uh, no, like I said, I really don't know. Okay. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I think if, if I, I think Connor needs to stay at 45. I mean, he, he hasn't even defended the belt yet. I think he has to stay at 45. That, that's what I think. If he moves up to 155 and, and doesn't drop the title, how would you react to that? I mean, what am I going to do? Scream and shout? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what, what, can I, what can I really do? What can I do? I mean, uh... Dana and Lorenzo, they know what the, they know what I want, man. I mean, there are people like, oh, you need to call them. Well, they fucking know what I want. You know, what am I going to do? Bother them and, 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 and for what? For them to say no? Mm. Or promise me something one day and then say no the next? Come on. If he fights in March, uh, his team has said that they want him to fight in March, and then maybe comes back for UFC 200, uh, would you be okay with waiting? Because, you know, things can happen. A guy breaks his foot, breaks his ankle. I don't know, who knows what can happen? Would you be okay with waiting, or because you've you've waited before and it hasn't really panned out as well? At the end of the day, you want to make money. You're a prize fighter. You want to be champion too, but you have to provide for your family. So, what would be your mindset then if he fights at 155 in March? What do you do? I you know, I know some some people tell me I should wait, but what, I'm, I'm going to wait so they can take it away from me again. Yeah, I don't think I can do that. You know, like you said, man, I, I got a family to feed. This window's closing. You know, I mean, we all know this ain't a, a, a long career. And uh, I'm 34. I feel great. I feel young. Everything feels I feel like I'm getting better. But, you know, time wins over everybody eventually. So I feel like I'm just missing opportunities left and right. How many more years do you think you have left in you? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't like to put a number on anything. I feel great. You know, 40 has always been a, a, a number in my head. But, uh, you know, 34, we'll see. We'll see. Just wanna, we'll, get, we'll take it one, one fight at a time at this point. What's your stance on, on 135 these days? I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, I, my, my, my idea is to get that 45-pound belt before I do anything, before I make any decision on whether I want to go 35 or not. Okay. Um, uh, but <laughs> the, the way things are looking, who knows? I, I mean, if I'm ever going to get this friggin' opportunity. But, um, you know, it's not, it's not getting easier to cut weight in the sport, you know, with, the, with everything they're doing. So. Sure. Who knows if I really want to get down all the way to 35. When, when you did 145, when you, like now when you're fighting at 145 against Chad, um, obviously you couldn't use an IV. In the past, could you use an IV? Did you use it? Yeah, I used, I used one. I didn't need it. You know, I really didn't need it. I just used it because everyone did. You know, and uh, this past time I didn't use it, and I probably felt better than I ever have. So, yeah, yeah I, I, for me, I don't think it mattered. Well, I mean, you just knocked out Chad Mendez, so clearly... <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, you really can't say all else because the IV... Sure. <laughs> you know what I'm just saying? My, the way my body felt the, uh, after the, the night of Wayne's, the, the day of the fight, I didn't feel bloated at all. I felt pretty good. So, uh, you know, uh, no IV don't matter for me. Most, at least at 45. Right. Who knows uh, what 35 is? Most people, including myself, were, were blown away that Connor knocked out Jose in 13 seconds. What was your reaction to it? Yeah, I was just like you, blown away. I mean, I, I don't think any, Anybody expected that. Not that I didn't expect a knockout to happen. I just didn't think it was going to happen in that fashion, 13 seconds. You really can't take anything from it, you know? Did you think that, Did you think that? okay, like, were you not a believer of Connor and now you are? Or were you a believer beforehand? Like, did that seal it for you? No, I, I, I've always been kind of, you know, talking about Connor. You know, um, you know I, 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 I'm not, like, I think the, the, way, the way he talks and carries himself, a lot of people don't want to give him credit because he's kind of a... Uh, kind of a dick at times, you know, <laughs> certain people in, in, in the UFC and are in my weight class. But, uh, you know, I call spade a spade, man. He definitely uh, shows up, performs, and puts on good shows. And, uh, he did that again against Aldo. I mean, did I expect that to happen? No. I don't think anybody did. Do you have the blueprint in your mind how to beat this guy? Do you, do you already see it? 
Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, you know, you've seen shades of it with, with Chad, and I'm definitely a different fighter than Chad, but can do some of the things he can, you know. And, uh, I mean, it's not going to be an easy fight. All fights are hard. But, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm the worst matchup for, for McGregor. I think he knows it. I think you know it. I think the UFC knows it. I just need that, need that chance to get my hands on him. So do you feel like that's why you're not getting it? No, nah, no. Nah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, if he goes up, fights for, doesn't fight. If he goes up to 55, doesn't fight for that title, yeah, then I say there, there's a reason he's not fighting me. Mm. If he fights for the title, I can say, all right, you want, you want to fight two, two, two titles? I mean, you know, what can I say? I still think it's, uh, I still think, you know, if you make everyone else have to let go of belts, he should have to leave that belt behind. But, uh. First and foremost, though, I want to fight McGregor for the belt as soon as possible. That's what I want. Am I going to get it? I fucking doubt it. Mm. Um, what if they say March? Would you be ready to fight in March? Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, I'm, cu- I'm curious. I, I want to ask you the same question I asked your, your manager and friend, uh, Ali Abdelaziz, in, in uh, December after the Dos Anjos win. He's in an awkward spot because you guys go way back. He's your manager. He's also RDA's manager, and he seems to be in the running as well. Is that weird for you that your guy kind of manages both guys that that's in the the running for this fight? No, I'm not not really because obviously it's not it's not up to us. It's not <laughs> like uh, Ali's calling him saying, "All right, we're gonna he's fighting Frankie, he's fighting those signs, fight this guy." It's, it's up to them, you know. So it kind of don't matter, you know. Um, so let, let's just clear something up here because a lot of people like to make jokes about it. you went on kind of this uh, Twitter rant. Uh, a few days ago, and then there was a mix-up where it seemed like Ali was doing some of the tweeting. Are, are you running your Twitter account? Is he? Let's clear it up. Ah, right, uh, okay. It's so funny. I mean, people write stories about this. I guess <laughs> MMA's hurting. MMA's hurting for stories. You know, they got Sherlock Holmes out there checking Twitter saying, oh my God, this guy switched names. I was, I believe it was the day before Christmas Eve. Yep. Ali's like, brother, you need to do Q&A, brother, q and I said, I don't feel like doing it. He's like, do you care if I do it? I said, go ahead. He's like, I'm going to tag Lorenzo, Connor, blah, blah, blah. And yes, I said, go for it. Now, all the stuff he said, do I believe it? Yes, I believe I fight Connor. I, be- I believe I beat Connor. I believe all the stuff I said that, that he said. I pretty much do believe everything he said. Would I have worded it the way he did or spelt it the way he did? Maybe not. <laughs> but I got the point across, and I got people talking. So That's true. job well done. So you don't mind if he goes under you and, and tweets and shakes things up a little bit? No, no. Usually it's promotional stuff. This time he, he said he wanted me to do it. I didn't do it, or I, I, I didn't want to do it. And he asked if he could. I said, "Go ahead," you know. But he freestyled. Past these guys, they're just too too slick. These little twitters. <laughs> he freestyled on you a little bit, and uh... he did freestyle. You know, and usually usually he's got an assistant with him to help him spell. I think his assistant was off for the day or something because. It was pretty bad. <laughs> so what's your reaction when you wake up the next day and you see this is an actual story that, you know, he messed up maybe and wrote I, I was, you know, I was like, man, what I do now? But, uh, you know, whatever, man. People are talking about it. This this is what I want. That's what I said. Everyone's like, oh, you don't say nothing. You need to talk more. You need to talk more. All right, I fucking talk more. Now now people are, are, are dogging that. So you just can't win either way. It's kind of funny. Uh, Ali reminds me, and I say this with the utmost, you know, respect and love. He's like an old school pro wrestling manager, like one of those guys who, you know, he has some guys that are a little reluctant to really say what's on their mind. So he goes out and does it. I have no problem with that, to be honest. It's part of the game. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he, he's he's a, he's a, he's a uh, character in this game of MMA. He is, you know, and uh, it's his heart's in the right place. That's that's all. He just wants that what's best for us, and you know, he sometimes goes out on a limb to do it. Man, I got to say though, I, I love the. Uh, the passion and emo- I, I don't think I've ever heard you swear this many times in an interview. You're pissed. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm letting it all fly. All right, this is this is me too. It's not Ali, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> You're so. What do you ha- like? What's the motivation now? You wake up in the morning. You go to the gym. Are you just pissed off, taking it out on everyone? Are are you, do you not have motivation to train because this is frustrating? How do you go about your day these days? Yeah, I'm training. Man. I'm in the gym already, man. That's uh. There's no, no no lack of motivation. Uh, I just go about doing what I do. I'm not worried about, you know, uh, I'm trying to, you, you can't get upset over things you can't control. And I'm really trying to take that approach with this. You know, it, it's hard, though, because this is my my life. This, this is everything I put into. And uh, it's really hard not to get frustrated. But, you know, everyone around me is getting frustrated. I'm trying to keep them like. Yeah, and so if if they come out and say he's fighting anyone else, how will you react to that? Do you have any idea? Uh, uh, realistically, I, I'm... I'm 
I mean, come on. If that's, that's what's going to happen. I'm fucking setting myself up for that already. Uh. You know, I'm, I'm not setting myself up for, uh, for anybody. Hope for the best, expect the worst. I'm expecting the worst. Expecting the worst. So I guess if it comes out of left field and, and, and a surprise uh, you know, reaches your doorstep, then it's a good thing. But right now you're not expecting to fight Connor. Yeah, I'm not. And I'm you, not. You know, and, the only way that I could fight Connor if Connor says I want to fight Frankie Edwards. That's it. And I don't think he's going to say that. Why not? Why why don't you think so? I just think he thinks I'm the most risky fight out there. Why mm. would he want to risk that? He wants to go make all this money, spend all this money. He doesn't want, you know, he blames it on the weight cut. If it's if it's the weight cut, then you can't fight 45 no more. Right. You know. And you don't feel like he's got a he, he go, go ahead. Go no, please. No, go ahead. You're good. You're good. Uh, and you don't feel like right. if you call Lorenzo, I feel like you've had a really good relationship with him and Dana. You don't feel if you make your case that they'll see the light here. You think he's calling all the shots? Yeah, I mean, uh, from what I what I think, yeah, he's calling the shots. I don't think it matters with uh, uh, Dan Lorenzo. And, and really, I, I don't think I'm the best fight that they want. They, I, don't, I don't think they right. want him to pick me either. You know, hmm. so I got all three of them against me. <laughs> Wow. All right. Well, uh, I do appreciate the emotion, like I said, and uh, I, I said on this show not that long ago, I feel like, and I even said on UFC Tonight, if he fights you, and let's say he gets by you, then he has cleaned out the division. But let's just get this one out of the way. This is the guy who deserves it. They said he deserves it. He's the one who... Agreed. Agreed. You know, he cuts a boatload of weight, because, you know, he's the baddest guy in the world, but he cuts a boatload of weight to make to make 45. You know, and he's saying, he, you know, he wants to have two belts, this and that. But if you cut so much weight, you, it's not going to get easier. Might as well do it now. Get mm. it out of the way. Get it out of the way, yeah. Um, it doesn't look like New York will get done, but wow. Could you imagine Frankie versus Connor in New York? New Jersey guy against the Irish guy at MSG. Biggie and Tupac. You come out with Biggie. He comes out with the, the Notorious song. Wait, you're both coming out with Biggie. That's weird. Biggie, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's kind of weird. You know, I was there first, man. You were... I was there first. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, well, I, I, I do appreciate like I said, and uh, good luck uh, trying to get it, and I, I hope it all works out. You deserve it, my man. What, what you did to Chad, no one's done, and uh, wow. I mean, what, what, what can you say about your year? A very impressive year. Congratulations on that year, and uh, good luck in 2016. Frankie, always great to talk to you. I hope you get what you deserve, my friend. All right, thanks so much, man. I'll see you soon. Okay, and be careful on that Twitter, by the way, all right? Yeah, get dangerous yeah, yeah. out there. I'm definitely changing <laughs> passwords. Fuck him now. All right. Later, bro. All right, there he is, Frankie Edgar. Wow, never heard that side of Frankie Edgar before. Coming out, guns blazing, first interview of the year, interview of the year, interview of the year. 